Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 15 developer preview one that I have here on my Pixel 8 Pro to show you each and every new change. So without further ado, let's jump in. Starting with the build number as usual, it's AP31.240119.016 and the code name for Android 15 is Vanilla Ice Cream. Before showing you the new features, I have to warn you from side loading this build via a PC because it broke my Pixel 8 Pro and it's stuck on the boot screen. For me to get it back up and running, I had to do a lot of troubleshooting steps and factory reset the device. While troubleshooting the problem, I found this warning in the OTA download page that I didn't notice at first. It says here, we strongly recommend that you unlock the bootloader on your device if possible and unlocking the bootloader requires resetting the device. So you need to keep that in mind if you want to use this method or else it's better to do it under your settings which is less risky. Now let's talk about the new features and the first thing I noticed is the better and the smoother animations all over the place when compared to Android 15. I did notice it while scrolling when I lock or unlock the device and also when I open and close apps. So please let me know in the comments if you feel the same. Google also added a brand new haptic feedback to enhance the experience even further. When you try to adjust your display brightness, you will get a very nice haptic feedback that becomes stronger the more the display becomes brighter and vice versa until it goes completely away. It's hard to explain how it feels, but it's a totally new haptic feedback that I didn't experience before on any of my Pixel phones and it also works with the brightness slider under the normal settings app. Talking about the haptics, now you can turn off the keyboard haptics under settings, sound and vibration, and then vibration and haptics. When you scroll all the way down, you will find keyboard vibration here at the very bottom. When you turn off the switch, you will no longer get any haptic feedback in the keyboard. Moving to the quick settings, and I found that the font size style now dismisses everything and takes you to whatever screen you are currently on to see your changes live. And when you go to settings and then notifications and then scroll all the way down, you will see a new feature called notification cool down. When you tap on it, it will show you here a menu item called notification cool down with a description saying gradually lower the notification volume when you get many successive notifications for the same app. When you go inside, you have here the option to choose between apply cool down to all notifications, apply cool down to conversations only, or don't use cool down. This is a neat feature, especially if you have your phone turned off for a while. We all know that once you turn on the device, you will get bombarded with the notifications from multiple apps, and this one will make things a bit less annoying. Now let me show you a couple of random tweaks that I spotted while using the device. The first one after the initial setup, while the phone restoring the backup and reinstalling my apps back again, all the apps you see here are not grayed out as expected, but once I open the folder, that's when they will change into a grayed out color. And this is a new behavior after installing Android 15. The second change I found, when I started Asphalt 9, I got the Google Play sign-in bubble at the bottom right corner, and instead of showing at the center like before. Last but not least, the Easter egg is slightly different than the one we have in Android 14. So when you go here to the software version and the tap on the Android version, you will, get, you will get a rectangular shape instead of the circular one like before but you get exactly the same spaceship game as before, but it feels a little bit faster and the background looks slightly different. Now let's talk about the bugs and I spotted three minor bugs in this build beside the one I mentioned at the beginning of the video and none of them impacted my experience that much. The first one is the QR code scanner for some reason is misaligned and you don't see the preview correctly. The second bug is the game dashboard is grayed out and it doesn't show up when you play any game. So let me show you how it looks under settings. So when you go to uh, notifications and then do not disturb and then schedules, you will see here that the game dashboard is grayed out. You only have the toggle, even though the toggle is turned on when I launch any game, it doesn't show up. The third and last bug is when you take a screenshot for some reason the home bar at the bottom appears to be much bigger than the real one. So here is the real one and this is how it looks when you take a screenshot. Beside the ones I mentioned, there are six more bugs in the release notes of Android 15. The first one is related to side loading the OTA image, which I encountered myself. 
it might lead to corrupting the device and Google recommend installing the factory image instead to solve this problem. The second one is related to setting up your face unlock. The preview screen appears to be trimmed or cropped, but I didn't encounter this one on my Pixel 8 Pro. Another one related to the picture-in-picture -picture mode. It says here the picture-in-picture -picture window disappears if the device is rotated before the picture-in-picture -picture transition finishes. The fourth one, when a locked SIM card is inserted into an unlocked device, the user is not prompted to enter the pin to unlock the SIM card, to work around this issue, lock and unlock the device manually. Then we have a couple more under apps. The first one is related to Google Play Store. Sometimes it crashes with a null pointer exception when trying to update apps. The Google TV app sometimes fails to initiate video playback and instead displays a play movies and TV is temporarily unavailable message. All other bugs are related to the Android Studio and tools which will not impact you directly. Now let's talk about the performance and I'm really impressed by Android 15 DP1 which is totally unexpected. The scrolling is very smooth, opening and the closing apps is very snappy, but I still don't recommend installing this build because I didn't have enough time to test each and everything. But when it comes to banking apps, they work absolutely fine. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you on Android 15 DP1. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.